Hello and welcome again to Money Tips. This is Charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Now, you, you may not be watching this live as it goes out on, on Facebook. Uh, and I thank you to those who do tune in on, on Facebook. Uh, but whenever you, you see this, uh, at the time of recording, I, I'm saying that a week today uh, and, and really in a few hours time, it will be one week to go until... 11 p.m. on the 31st of January when the UK will leave the EU. Brexit is going to happen. We've got the Royal Assent this week uh, for, for the, the withdrawal bill and the European Parliament have, have let it go through so that they're, they're not. Uh, hi to, to Joyle there coming on and, and, and other people there. Great, great to see you. Uh, and, and the European Parliament have not stood in the way as, as expected. So uh, in one week's time, we will be out of the, the EU and it, it will be an historic moment whether you agree with it or not it will be one of those moments in history and you know we, we it will affect the way we, we run things in the UK for you know 50 maybe 100 years to, to come so it, it's, it's a momentous moment and we've had three years of struggle we've, we've seen governments fall over this and finally, as Boris would say, we've got Brexit done, we've, we've got it done, or we will have it done by next week. So how will, you know, how, how do you think we're going to prosper? Well, how do I think we're going to prosper? Uh, you know, because we, we're leaving the Union, European Union after 47 years in, in the, the EU. Uh, how will we prosper and how will we look in the next 50 years time? Well, we, we, nobody knows that for sure. Uh, what I do know is that what Britain was like in, in 1973. I was at school then and I, I, I know what it was like then and I know how my parents felt when we, we joined what was called the, the European Communities at that time. It wasn't called the, the European Union, it was called the European Communities. It was largely seen as commonly known as the Common Market, which was a trading organisation. You know, if, if people had known what it had become or would become, I think a lot of people would have felt very differently about it than, than they did because they didn't expect that it was going to become this European super state that the, the people who run it want it to become. And, you know, I, I, I know what it's like. And I remember my mum saying how prices had gone up. As soon as we joined the EU, prices went up and in the shops, just general things. I mean, we weren't a wealthy family, but, you know, a weekly shop and just things went up. And I've seen it in other countries as well. I saw when, when Spain joined the EU, uh, how things went up in price. I've seen it in Ireland where I've got a lot of relatives. I saw how things changed there. Now, there, there are many good things about the, the EU and, and, and there are many disadvantages as well. But all I can say is what things were like in those days. We, we had a car industry. If you look at old films or old episodes of The Sweeney or something, you'll see British cars on the road. There was Leyland, there was there was a lot of Ford cars and Cortinas and Austins and Rovers and all made here in, in the West Midlands, but by British companies. And so something's gone wrong. Something's gone wrong since then. Um, you know, we're not allowed to, to prop up our state industries anymore when they get into trouble. And yet Germany and France still somehow manages to do that. And they still have a, a car industry. Um, we also had a, a thriving uh, steel and coal industry. We had uh, fishing uh, and we kind of made stuff, didn't we? We seemed to manufacture more stuff at, at that time. But the fishing industry has been depleted because the, the, the our waters are now open to, to, to large fleets, mainly from Spain. Spanish fleets who come over here and plunder our waters because they've plundered their own waters. So they come over here and plunder our waters in the North Sea. And it, it's, you know, the, these industries have, have been wiped out by after joining the, I'm not saying directly by the EU, but a lot of things have changed since then. Um, and, and I think although there was a recession in the 70s, we, there was a worldwide recession due to this oil crisis, somehow things didn't seem so so tough. There, there were jobs around. Uh, if, if my dad left one job, he seemed to be able to get another job. If people left school with hardly any qualifications, they seemed to be able to get work. Uh, you know, there, there were a lot of people worked for Industries like the states controlled industries, the civil service, the post office and the NHS and, and the transport and, and that sort of thing. But there, there was a lot of work about and, and, and just just things. We seem to have a better standing in the world. We were further up the economic table in terms of size of the economy. Uh, and although there were problems, 
uh, a lot of those problems coincided with joining the EU. There, there was this oil crisis brought on by the, the, they called it the Arab oil crisis, when, when the price of oil shot up and inflation was high. We had a lot of union problems in those days. Unions were bringing the countries to a standstill on a, on a regular basis, demanding higher pay rises and that sort of thing. But that was largely sorted out when the Thatcher government came into power in 77. So that's the, the way I see it. Um, I, I think ultimately we can be better off, although there will be problems. What will happen to the European Union? I, I don't know. There's already problems in the, the, the most of the economies in the, in the European Union. And the European Central Bank, the ECB, are now spending 20 billion euros a month on buying bonds. What does that mean? They're printing money, uh, quantitative easing. And they say they will continue to do so and, until it, it seems unnecessary to, to do it anymore. So they're buying bonds. They're propping up the economy by buying bonds in banks so that they pour liquidity into the market and really propping up the market from going into recession. That can't last. I, I, I don't see how that is sustainable when you just print money and artificially they're using other people's money to, to buy bonds. Um, and, and these people are not accountable to anybody. They can just do what they like. Um, and, you know, we know that the European Commission have never published accounts. I'm a member of Rotary. We take a few thousand pounds and we give it to charity. And, you know, we, we publish accounts every year. We have to be transparent. They're not transparent. We don't know what they do. It's, it's a massive overblown organisation that's just grown out of all proportion. So it needs to slim down, it needs reform. And had it gone into, had it accepted reform, I think that this country would still be in the European Union and there wouldn't be all this turmoil. Now, what's happening to uh, our country? Well, OK, we, we've now got three million EU born citizens who now live in the UK. Most of them will settle here after Brexit. I think a couple of million people already have applied for, for settlement in some form or another or, or, or British passports, they're not going to go home. This idea that everyone's going to leave the country when we, we leave the EU and they don't feel welcome anymore is, is just a load of nonsense. I, I know lots of people uh, you know, from countries like Romania, Poland, Bulgaria, they're not going anywhere. Things are not bad here. They've settled here. They've got kids here. They've got jobs here. Why would they go back? You know, it's not going to happen. Now, the, 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 the mass immigration has... Uh, benefited the country in some ways because it's made it competitive with, with wages and that sort of thing, which haven't gone up much for 10 years, but it has made it difficult for, for people who've had more or less stagnant wages over the last 10 years. Um, and, and I suppose it makes uh, more sense for the pensions that more people are there in the country, younger people are paying taxes to support the people who are drawing their state pension because there's no fund, is there? It's just paid, the fund is, there isn't a fund, that pension that we draw from the state is just taken from taxes that, that people pay now. So I suppose you need younger people coming in. Uh, but but that's the situation now. But that has meant there's been a, a massive housing shortage. So there's still a big housing shortage. There's 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 longer queues for doctors and, and, and NHS waiting lists. But things will, will, will eventually settle down. And I think Britain will prosper. But we're going to have some rough times with the trade negotiations. We're, we're kind of relying on we, we seem to be relying on uh, this trade deal we're going to get from Donald Trump. We're going to be, a, I'm going to give you a big trade deal. It's going to be a big, big trade deal, a big trade deal. But now he's saying, well, um, you know, if you accept uh, Huawei into to Europe, then all bets are off and, and we're going to penalise you. Uh, and if we impose this, this tax on technology giants like Google and, and Amazon, then you know, that will cause a problem. And, and he's going to then impose tra tariffs on European cars. So we, we don't know what's going to happen there. Um, I think the, the technology tariffs is, is not a bad thing because, you know, these companies like Amazon are really destroying our high streets. They're destroying industries that have been around for a long, long time. You know, companies like Debenhams and House of Fraser have been around you know, 100 years. I've just been wiped out by this Amazon effect and they don't pay any tax. You know, they're paying very little tax. They don't employ that many people and they've got an unfair advantage. They're not paying uh, much council tax and rates and this sort of thing. And, and they're hardly paying any tax. Google are the same, Facebook are the same, even Starbucks is scandalous that they were not paying tax on their profits here because they were paying a premium back to their Luxembourg, which is in the EU, by the way, Luxembourg based company. Uh, so uh, they, they're avoiding tax. It's, it's all wrong. 
you know, we, we can't just have people walk in here. I know we're an open market, but you've got to, you know, America claims to be an open market, but they protect their own. America, make no mistake, America protects its own. They would never allow this to happen in their country, and we can't allow it here. And whatever Donald Trump says, we, we've got to stand firm on this. So I, th I think we're doing the right thing by imposing this tax or we have to come to some agreement anyway. Um, but that, that, that's where we're going. I think in the long run, we will prosper. We'll be able to make our own rules and regulations and you know, set our own taxes and tariffs and uh, make Britain more competitive by reducing taxes and make it a more competitive place to, to set up a business. So... That's where we go. But whatever will happen, will happen. We all have to sort of do our own thing. We have to row our own boats, as they say. If you're in business, we have to continue in our business. We have to do the things we have to do on a daily basis. And the bigger picture will be taken care of one way or the other. It will, it will all work itself out because it's all about money and companies will want to and countries will want to do business with us. They'll want to sell our goods. They'll want to sell our German cars and French wines to the UK. So they'll have to play ball in one way or then the other, despite all the, the sabre rattling. We, things will carry on and we'll, we'll have to continue doing business with Europe and with other countries around the world. So I, I hope things will work out for us and, and we, we could move forward here to a, a different era, really, a completely different era. Most of us have grown up, most people have grown up, never known anything but... The, the EU, right? We, a lot of young kids have grown up and that's why they favour the EU because they've just grown up with it. Plus the fact they've been pretty much brainwashed by universities and schools to thinking that the EU is the best thing since sliced bread. You know, the universities get massive funding from the EU. So why wouldn't they say? And and I, I went back to university a couple of years ago, um, a few, well, maybe five, ten years ago now. I, I, I went back to study in university and they were pushing the EU left, right and centre. They, they loved the EU. They, they thought all the laws and everything brought in, the human rights, all that was great. They loved it. You know, so the, I, I've seen it firsthand. Um, so they, they, there you go. Uh, we've got some tough times ahead. We've got some tough negotiations coming up. But I, I, I hope and pray that things will do well and, and we'll all move forward and into a new era. So thanks for listening. And as I said, if you're watching now, this time next week, uh, it will be coming up to that 11 p.m. I'm not going to go down to Parliament Square and shout and scream. Big Ben won't be sounding off because it's under repair. So they'll have to have some speakers maybe with Big Ben sounding those 11 chimes. I don't know. But th there'll obviously be some big celebrations. And, you know, then then, then we'll move forward. I don't think anything's going to immediately change on, on you know, the 1st of February. Things will, will st start to change over over the coming years as it as it did, did when we we joined the eu so so there you go thanks for listening have a great weekend and thanks for those who tuned in on on facebook live i know it's a bit late at night to go out but um on, on the broadcast but anyway thanks for tuning in and i'll speak to you again on monday good night and have a great weekend